Welcome, everybody. Happy Wednesday. It is our daily rhino call. How's everybody feeling? Who's everybody? Yeah, love it, love it. All right, turn those screens on. Y'all need to show your beautiful faces. If you are not naked, you can show your screen. I don't care what your face looks like. Everybody is all beautiful. No matter what your mommy or your daddy told you when you were little, you're beautiful. <laughs> no matter what those kids said in middle school, you are beautiful and you need to show your face. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. You're amazing. All right. We have a lot to talk about and a lot to cover today. And I'm super excited to hear. We're going to hear from Miss Kelly Couch and she's going to kind of bring it home for us um, and add in a little bit more from yesterday's call with Nick, who had an amazing, like who had amazing distinctions, takeaways, who thought yesterday's call was fantastic with Nick, put a one in the chat. Yes. Did you guys love his call? Yes. So much value from him. That was incredible. Um, and did anybody put a two in the chat if, ooh, Chelsea said she sold a five day because of that call to a person in the nail salon. Boom. Put a two in the chat. If you did the call to action, you talked to somebody, not even worried about the outcome, but you just like, you, let's see, two, two. Did you guys like have make some conversations, talk to some people? All right. Look at that. I love it. That's amazing. Oh yeah. Anna Justice said two trials out. Tiffany said, heck yes. You guys are amazing. Awesome. Cool. So, um, we're going to get to that in just a second. Yesterday, I forgot to touch on recognition. So I want to kick that off first. So would you guys do me a favor and shout somebody out or more than one person that you would like to recognize in your business that is kicking butt, charging like a rhino? Michaela B. McCarrier. Come on, you guys. Let's get it rolling. We got to pump the energy up here. Cheryl, Devin H., Emily Maurice, Casey for presenting like a rhino last night. Patrice, Christine, Nate Justice, Julie, uh, Sarah, Christine, Amanda, Katie Rose, Sam, Amanda Prairie for signing two promoters and kicking ass. Yes. Jamie, Kristen, Bella, Danny, Chantel, Brittany, Jennifer. Love it. You guys are killing it. This is awesome. Cool. And real quick, draw something in the chat that you're super grateful for today. Literally anything and everything. Nate said, uh, everyone on this call for showing up. Yes. Agreed. Sunshine, ketones, financial freedom. <laughs> grateful for ketones, sunshine, keto up, warmer, last minute trip, sunshine, keto life parties, working on quitting my job. Yes, John. Frick yeah. <laughs> Keto up, husband. All right. Well, since you guys are all trying to ruin the surprise, I was going to try to make this big, glorious announcement. I'm just going to do this. And I'm just going to see what happens. So, did y'all... Uh-oh. Maybe not. Did y'all see what happened Nothing today? Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Let me see that dance. Do you guys see your back office? What the heck? I was so not expecting that. So if you didn't get the um, announcement, Keto Up is now a mainstay. It is in your cloud right now. Anybody can go on there and purchase it. And who freaked out when they saw that you could add it to smart shit? Like, what the heck? I am just like, y'all, that means 22% off. Like, what? <laughs> Woo! That's amazing. Um, so, look at people said they're already adding it to their smart ship. So, I am challenging, I'm going to challenge myself and my team to just go, like, for lack of better term, balls to the wall for the next, like, four days and end the month strong with Keto Up. It's all about the urgency and the excitement that you put behind it. Sorry, Josie's trying to join in the call. Sorry about that. Um, but like go balls to the wall and, and create that urgency and that excitement now, like 
just because it's a mainstay doesn't mean you should just like treat it like, oh, well now it's here so anybody can get it. No, like let's freaking rock and roll. Let's get people hooked up with Keto Up. Tell them about Smart Ship. You should be reaching out to all your people, letting them know. Go back to all your people that wanted to know about Keto Up that didn't purchase on the last flash sale. Like you should be hustling for the next four days and obviously beyond. But I think this is a great opportunity to finish the month strong. Not to mention, um, we've got the Mitoplex on there, Ruby Rush and Unleashed um, Eclipse is still up there. Like there's a lot of goods back there. So, you know, you've got lots of opportunity to, to crush it through the end of March here. Can you guys believe it's almost April? <laughs> like, what the heck? Um, also, we had a little COC huddle this morning and I wanted to just give you guys some information that Michael Rutherford shared that I thought was really awesome. Um, basically, he just talked about how this product keto up is just it's a game changer like this is four years in the making um this is such an exciting time in history really like if you think about it like this is like he was like i remember when b used, used to always talk about like one day we'll be able to crack open and drink ketones out of a can and put our bodies into ketosis immediately and like today is the day <laughs> like it's here it's here like you guys are a part of history your history in the making so like yes so i have goosebumps like just saying that out loud it's incredible so something he talked about is that you know kind of putting a twist on your keto life parties and making keto up parties or like keto up tastings so you could even do this in the next four days before the end of the month get a bunch of people or maybe not even a bunch of people get three people over call up your neighbors say y'all gotta come try this keto up the second it hits their mouth they're gonna go on and buy a case like it's just game over when it hits my cheeks does everybody's cheeks like pucker every time they take a drink i'm always like oh i feel like i don't know i feel like i can do crazy things when I drink keto up. So point being is get the word out there, tell your people, invite some people over, do a keto up tasting. You know, I just think it'd be cool to like kind of put a different twist on it and, and get creative. Um, because once people get that green apple and it touches their lips, they're just, it's done. So yes, clean energy. Um, Let's see, I stole Kelly's idea and did keto all parties in my car and on lives. I love it, yes. Love it, love it, love it. You guys are amazing, cool. I feel like there's so much craziness. I'm like all over the place. All right, stay focused, Alexis. Okay, so we did gratitude. We did recognition. We talked about keto up being here. Who's fired up? Who's feeling good? Come on, let me see some teeth. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You guys, you got to give me some energy. There we go. Kelsey's like breaking her neck over there. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to have Miss Kelly Couch come on and she's going to do the connect piece today. But how many of you after yesterday's amazing call with Nick were like, okay, great. But once I have these people, you know, once I start these conversations, like once I get them interested, even what do I do next? Like I'm an awkward turtle and I don't know how to connect these people face to face. Right. So Kelly's going to kind of tie it all together so that now you have like step two after you've started these conversations and maybe even gotten these people interested face to face, belly to belly, whatnot, because Kelly and Nick, if you didn't, if you haven't caught on their husband and wife <laughs> and um, they've built their business together and like 99% of it has been face to face and belly to belly. So let's give it up for Kelly and um, you guys get your notes and pens ready notebooks and pens ready and let's freaking rock and roll you ready miss kelly let me unmute you there you go all right thank you so much and we are excited for keto up nick and i have been trying to save it to sell it and do tastings but we drink it and we're literally like giddy parents like the kids all three of we have three little kids for those of you that don't know and all three of them were melting down in the car and normally that would get you on edge we were hysterically laughing and we're like keto up for parents, like making parents better across the world. Okay. So we're excited about that. So yesterday cold contacting, and I want you guys to know, Alexis just talked about like turtle in the shell. Like I lived in the shell. So if you guys think that you cannot do cold contacting and bringing people around. So I learned from watching Nick, right. And so that I didn't have any other reference. It wasn't like, Oh, here's social media training. It was like Nick 
talking to everybody and their mother in like a hair salon and everywhere else. And I'm like, holy cow, like not only do I, am I living in this show, now I have to go full bore with this. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. So cold contacting, right? Nick showed you yesterday. It's awesome. If you don't think it's awesome yet, like it's at least invigorating. Like if you guys went out yesterday and talked to someone new, whether it went good, whether it went bad, did you not feel that like rush in your heart? You were like, okay, okay, here it goes. Five, four, three, two, one. We got it. It was scary, but you did it, right? And I think that that, like, raise your hand if you did that yesterday, because I'm proud of you. That t that's the first step. Like Alexis said, we did this, right? And it was ugly. And don't let Nick, don't let Nick, what Nick does now, intimidate you. Because I can remember, like, not only was I an awkward turtle, or not even, like, out of my shell, but I can remember, like, challenging Nick to do this. Like, our neighbor was out. We used to have those playbooks that you guys can hold. And I was like, the neighbor was out and we saw him, he was having trouble shoveling his driveway. And I'm like, Nick, go, go give it to him. And he walks over and he comes right back over like five seconds later. And he was like, babe, why'd you make me do that? And I was like, what happened? He was like, I said, you know, what do you know about ketones? And he said, are you giving me this to me? Cause I'm fat. And he's like, and I just said, no, I give it to everyone. And I turned around and walked away. So Nick has come a long way too. And it just takes doing it over and over and over again, practice, right? So I think the reason I want to do this and bring it all back in is because, cold, like Alexis said, cold contacting is awesome once you start to do it, but you have to know what to do next, right? So for me, Nick can just go. He has no awkward bone in his body, but for me, it's like, okay, now I met these people. Now what, right? There's a need. We found there's a need for more personal connection in our industry. You guys know that. You've seen that. And the more you do it, it feels easier, right? So to do this, we need to just keep doing it. So our company as a whole is encouraging and fostering this concept. So let's run with it and learn how to do it, right? Yesterday, Nick talked about that, what it looks like, what it sounds like. And now I want to follow up with that. Like Alexis said, this is near and dear to us because until a few months ago, this is what we did. Now we're taking all these social media tips and tricks and like watch out world when that consistency starts to pay off in some months and years because holy cow, like that's a whole other area, right? But I was terrified of this and I'm and I was green through and through and now I'm finding like, wow, like I just wasn't really weird in a social situation. Like, you know, the more you do it, you're like, I got this, I can do this. So here's my outcomes. Why is this important? How to do it. We're gonna talk about the next step after you attract them through cold contacting how to get better at this, and then our call to action, okay? So I think we've done on these calls an amazing job of showing you tools to connect people. Like if you, we prove it, you know, there's so many tools now. Like three years ago, there was doctor's calls and I dove into that and that just fed my green personality. But now there's like 150% more than there were three years ago. So we've done a great job of describing those and getting those to people. Um, Abigail, you know, listening to where to connect. Nate, last week on asking, listening, 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 right? So you know exactly what to connect them with. But I want to take that a step further today and talk about connecting people, right? And why this is important. So customers don't need you to give them more information. They need you to give them insight, right? And I want you to recognize that difference. So insight comes from taking the ideas or information and applying them to your situation or scenario. So we all have the information. We've been to Keto Academy, we've got a million resources, and those connections are good, but like they said about before and afters, it can become white noise to people if we're not then connecting it and applying it to their situation. So if I can connect you to someone who has been through what you're going through, Imagine the value that that brings to both what we're doing and to you who, who are watching this all unfold in front of your eyes, right? I think the digital world opens up so many new opportunities, but it also is threatening our personal connections, right? It gets easy to say, I'm going to keep doing this, like long game, long game, long game, but what you can be doing other stuff in the meantime to build those personal connections, which for us is our most valuable asset, right? Um, when it comes to closing the deal, right, or opening the relationship, like I said before, 
we feel like nothing replaces the power of a personal touch, nothing, right? So technology has changed how we gather information and how we get information about our prospects. It changed how we gather information. They gather information about us, but let's, and let's face it, like if you're not on social media, you're maybe like five steps behind. I'm not gonna say, cause you can always catch up, but like you have to do social media too, right? But our smartest tried and true business tool is ourselves. And that's not going to change. You have to continually be working on yourself and what you're giving value in person too. So, um, sorry, following on here, but okay. So I think things become impersonal. And I think that I used to make it that way. Like when Nick would say he was going to invite people over the house, it was like, Oh, they're coming into my space. Like I'm an intro. They're coming into my shell. But the more I see that people crave that connection, right? And what what's the best way to reach, communicate, develop, and get your audience? There's no better way than to nurture the relationships, bring them into your life, bring them into like your story, right? They want to know that. So the way to do it is to is to get real, like get personal, go down the hall, take a walk, get in your car, get on a plane, wherever you can go to get around people, that's something you can do right now to start getting people to know you, right? I think that, you know, it's funny, even before Prove It, when I first started dating Nick, people would be like, wait, when you go downtown, Nick knows everyone. And I felt that. So my introvert, this, this has not, this doesn't just start with Prove It. Like we went out downtown, downtown like our downtown and Nick was just there he goes he knows every single person so here I am like hey so <laughs> this is great so it started years ago but it's great and Nick knows everyone right and so how did he do that he didn't It's not like it's an agent. Because it's just what you guys do too, whether you know it. I'm not, I wasn't necessarily good at just He steps into he cares about them, right? Connections. You'll start seeing that they could be busy with and you were talking about keto and meeting people, right? So what is going to give you that edge is a well-connected, well-nurtured network of people who are willing to refer you and connect you. It's still people that seal the deal. It's people, 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 right? So how do you do this, right? Yesterday, Nick gave you ideas on cold contacting. Like, if, raise your hand if you guys were like sweating when Nick was talking about cold contacting yesterday. <laughs> like you, you might have grown the biggest business. You may have just started yesterday, but cold contacting, you're like, I feel it. Like, I feel it. It, it gives me goosebumps. It makes me sweat. Like, even the idea of walking up to a human and actually talking is like, Ugh, like I have been there, my kids, I use them as an excuse. Like, I would love to talk to you, but my kids need me. I'm sorry, you know? And so I think you like give yourself an out always, but st standing there, that idea, it's scary. So I'm giving you permission today to start anywhere. Like be the weird person, mess it up. If you don't want to do that in your community, go like a half an hour away and just start with like people that you will never see. Okay, maybe an hour. No, like people that you're never going to see again. It's not, once the, the moment you realize that it's not about you, it's about who you're connecting with and who you're connecting them to. So it takes you, it takes the scary part of you out of it. Like anything more than that, that you bring is only more benefit because you're just bringing more of yourself. If you take yourself completely out and connect A and B, A customer that's been taking it and B new customer, you've done your job. You're, you're connecting the right resources to build belief. Anything you bring to it on top of that, is awesome. You guys are awesome. So you just keep bringing more of yourself and you're going to develop into a cold contacting queen, right? So I think there's two ways that you can do this. When I sat down to think about like, okay, there's, there's a couple things you can do or ways to go about that. For me personally, um, I like to take it from a per like, what did we talk about? So if I go up to a person and I've said this before and I'll say it again, stop thinking about talking to everyone about ketones and just think about talking to everyone. That freed me from so much anxiety. I just go up 
if they have kids, we talk about kids, whatever we connected on and whatever we talked about, that's where I go from. So if I connect with another homeschool mom at the library and she has three kids and she's like, hey, we're looking to, always looking to find more things to do and we love to go to parks. So does my family and we're home during the day because we homeschool too. Next week, are you guys free? Let's find a day that works and we'll all go to the park. That wasn't weird, right? I didn't say like, when we get to the park, can I mix you up a keto? And can you like make sure that you do all your research before that? No, right? And that wasn't weird. And then when we get to the park, we'll start having that conversation. It'll come in. That's not weird, right? And Nick, I think he's very good at knowing what his strengths are and what their needs are and matching those. So um, think about that as you go about your day. Like Nick is very good at the trades. Like he... He, people always need what he has. Like he was an electrician, he knows how to build houses. People don't know how to do that anymore. So that's a good connection point for him because people always need those services, right? And then they get to talking about what they do and like, oh, I used to do that, but now I miss it and I'll come look up your light for you or whatever. And then he, he matches needs in a different way. And then it always leads into the keto conversation. And um, I think people who make the best connections with us are the people that we go to when we need something, right? I think it, it's, it doesn't have to be this scary thing. Think about it in like real life. So I was just, I was thinking about it today because I was putting Nick's little, look at Nick and I getting organized, right? I was putting his cards. These are literally cards. Like I, I haven't connect, gotten this many business cards. I mean, you guys that are on Facebook and only do social media stuff, are you dying at like this literal many business, real business cards like Nick? He's a king, right? Like, I think he loves that. But I think it's also like when we need something, if there's 15, you know, photographers in here, who are we going to choose? We're going to choose the one that you know their story and you connected to them. If someone was like, hey, I'm a photographer and my prices are here and then they walk away, I'm, we're not going to call them. If they were like, oh, they shared their story and they moved here to chase their dreams of photography. And now they love shooting kids that are seven, five and three, my kid's age. Like you're going to call that person, right? Like don't, don't think about this in a normal life situation, right? That's who you're going to call. So the th same thing here, how are you going to connect with them? If you don't know any of their pain points, you don't know any of their, nothing about their current situation, their goals, their needs, if you're only focused on the outcome of selling ketones. So flip it around, give up the outcome and go for the connection, right? Nick and I love the idea of that like old barter concept where you're building the relationships and then when you need something and you need what I have, and we can sort of barter that idea. It's the same thing here. Who do you do business with? People you've met people you've connected with, people you trust, right? So the other way to do it, that was the first one, long-winded, get, get, connect personally. The second is to get them around other people in the, in the keto community. So just think about which feels more logical at that stage in the conversation. So if I've talked to someone, we haven't quite gotten to the keto conversation because it didn't get there naturally. I'm more likely to invite them maybe to the park or a barbecue or whatever, you know, but if I have got, if I've even mentioned it, then let's go with a keto life party or um, a social that we're having or something where they're going to get around and you can do both. So I think sometimes we, we disconnect. We try to say, here's my business and here's my life and we keep them separate. The more you can intertwine these, the, it's going to be, your, your world is going to change with your business and cold contacting because you're not like, do I put them in this category or do I put them in this category? Like if I met a mom that could crush, that needs keto and could crush the business, I might invite her and my other moms in my community and then we all go out. So not only is she, is this the mom thing that she wants, but it's also moms in my in my community here that are drinking keto and it's changing their lives. So it's all together. And then it gives, they start bringing it up naturally. And she's like, Oh, I didn't even know you did that. Yeah. Cause I didn't bring it up. Right. What I did was connect them. Right. I didn't have to spew all over her because I connected her. I connected her with other people. Right. It didn't seem weird when I just talked about it. Right. But why does it feel so weird when we try? It's just cause you haven't done it. You just got to do it more. It's going to be weird. It's going to feel weird. It's just being conscious about how you're interacting with people. 
So I think we always talk about that whole like bless and release idea. Like when people are super negative, you're like bless them and release them. I think you can go take that same concept and do it in a positive way, right? So if you, if you are building a community, even if you have one other person locally to you, that can be your community and you can start from there. That's how we started just one to one to one to one. And now it's, it's hundreds locally because just one more, one more, one more, that's your community. That's your people, right? That's who you're trying to find. So the same thing here, when you introduce them to other people, you're blessing and releasing, like you are introducing them and then you're introducing them to community and you're releasing them to go learn and enjoy and find community and it grows so organically, right? Sometimes I think when you're doing this and you're so focused on it, you can feel like you're going at this alone. What this does is it does the opposite. You connect them and your community does the work for you, right? But it doesn't feel like work, it feels like they found what they've been searching for. They want to be a part of something. They want to feel like people value them and enjoy their presence and enjoy them being around. You're just creating that for them. You're creating that environment. So I want to give a little bit of a warning here, right? When you're story sharing and you're connecting people, I want you to make sure that you're prepping people a little bit. And I have to throw this in here because for compliance reasons, I don't want you to tell them what to say. I want you to tell them maybe what not to say in a gentle way, right? So I think that there's, you want people to be fully authentic. You also want to make sure, because because it can get sticky. Like when Nick and I, like we said, we just started and we got everyone together. Everyone, That's all we did. But it got to be like we would, you know, someone would stand up and they throw all their pill bottles out the window and they're like, today's the day and you're like oh wow and someone over here is doing a live and you're like this is a hot mess like it's amazing but it's a disaster so I think we go through that same thing the same way we would share our stories the same way you want your person to share a story the same way 20 levels down in a year you want them to share their story right in the past this is how we always you know kind of guide people in the past I experienced a b c d e since keto, even if the past one includes, you know, whatever, I had died, you know, whatever medical conditions, you know, people bring them up. Since keto, five points. There's five points they can talk to once they start talking about keto, right? Focus, energy, fat loss, mood, and sleep. It keeps it easy, right? Du we're always talking about keto life party duplicatability. If they don't have to say, since my XYZ diagnosis, then I drink keto and this and that and the other. No, once they start talking about keto, they got those five points what I'm most excited about. You can teach them. You know how to do this. You've done it a million times with your own story. This has a double benefit, right? First, it connects the first person to the community. That's what we just talked about. Second, it lets your other person share their story, which is the next logical step in earning for free, becoming a promoter, and joining your team. And this whole goes back to Brian's whole ultimate prover experience. So I encourage people in my team or our team or our community to, if you're having a keto life party, and this takes intentionality, but if you're having a keto life party and you want to bring someone in from your community that has a great story, is it better to bring, for me to bring Nick in, who has been a promoter for three years and knows every single detail about ketones, or is it better for me to bring in Johnny, new person who's been drinking it for 10 days, feels great, and hasn't yet learned how to share a story? He's not comfortable putting it online for sure, because he's not even sure ketones are really doing it. If, is it. Or is it better to bring him in? And he's like, I mean, I don't even know. I drink this stuff and here's how I feel. It gets him sharing his story and the newest new person's like, oh, he's only been drinking it 10 days and he loves it. I can do that. It's all about making those simple, simple connections and teaching people the next step of the way, right? And I saw this quote today and I loved it, right? So on a lifetime value basis, emotionally connected customers are more than twice as valuable as highly satisfied customers. Like, let me read that again. On a lifetime value basis, which is what we want, right? We want to provide value to people so that in 10, 20 years, we're all still connected, right? We're all still getting people better, moving the human race forward, right? On a lifetime value basis, emotionally connected customers are more than twice as valuable as highly satisfied customers. What's that involve? You you right you they can drink it they can love it you can never talk to them are they going to stay around forever 
who knows if they keep loving the product they, but the next best thing comes and next well there's no better thing but the next thing in their mind right and, or if you've emotionally connected they're gonna stay they're gonna stay for a lot longer because they they have value in that there's so much value so how do you get better at this find one way is to find groups that are you the same way that katie and kendra taught us to do this online if you are uncomfortable or you feel weird starting a conversation with a person on a plane or in a coffee shop or in a hair appointment find a group drop yourself smack dab in the middle of a group that you know has a common interest because that's the reason you're all together so for example i'm a mom i'm a homeschool mom i was an athlete i like to volunteer you name it whatever your thing is there's groups for that in-person groups for that. <laughs> like you show up like you go there and you actually talk to people online right and or, i mean online in, in in real life so i think if you're uncomfortable starting that conversation you go there you already have a connection with every single person there because that's what the group is for so go there bring value to that group the same way you would online be yourself show up as yourself share the mindset growth you've had you know kind of connect with people there for the reason you're meeting and then all the other stuff comes up they want to know why you feel good they want to know why you're a better mom than you were three years ago they want to know all that stuff a second way to get better at this is to use the local environments to set yourself up for success with this so if you guys don't know about that you know we can send that out but there's eight local environments um, and I think if you set these up in advance the same way you would go in and set this up online so so Nick and I are focusing on organization this year and so last month and you guys are gonna laugh I want to do this every single day Nick and I I know we just were a little bit behind the boat here in Pennsylvania but we scheduled our post for the month Duh, right and we're like man that's so much less stressful like wow yeah that we did that a year ago that's literally how we did our thing right that wasn't us so that's us now but imagine if you did that on your actual calendar so you go into the, your local environment paper and you're like let's sit down and do it for the month so on this friday we're gonna have a social next Monday, we're gonna have a mastermind, then we're gonna do a workshop, then we're gonna do something fun with our team, then we're gonna have a personal meetup. But if you do, if you set those up, not only do you have the right avenue for each kind of connection that you're growing, but you have something to lead into. So when you meet someone, you're like, hey, we're all going bowling Friday, why don't you come out and meet people? Boom, done. You're not like, man, I gotta go set up something really quick so this person doesn't think I'm weird. Don't be weird, don't be weird, and it won't be weird, right? Um, but I think this lets you be more real and, and just lead into stuff naturally. So I think setting up that calendar is really crucial. And that's something that we've done, but I, we want to be like, <laughs> like this setting these posts up has changed our month so much that we're like, man, what more can we do? How much more can we do with this? So the, another thing, and the last thing I have to set um, yourself up for success or to do this better is to think bigger picture. Like I think we're always talking about vision and long-term and consistency. And I don't think that that hits home for people until you really realize, like you'll hit a point in your business where, or you'll hear Brian talk or Brian Underwood talk and you're like, wow, their vision is so much longer than mine is. So the, if you think of it, like these people, if they join your community will be your friends right so if you're not weird you're like would you rather be friends with someone who is is really awkward when they talk to you or like someone who's just normal and fun and invited you out to be friends right like that's think of long-term goal that's why nick he talked about yesterday that's why nick never thinks it's crazy to drive a half an hour for a five day or spend an hour in a coffee shop because that's the way he sees it like you guys always a lot of people, um, and I say you guys because Nick and I have certainly not mastered that area, but on social media, everyone talks about building their tribe and finding your people. You can do that same thing in person, but you just have to put in the time the same way you would online. You got to sit down with people and you know, it's all a filter system, same as it is online. You filter, you go to coffee, you're like, no, oh, that did not work. And like, if it makes you less awkward, fine. Like Nick and I do that all the time. We like, you'll go out and you're like, 
that was potentially the weirdest meetup I've ever had. Not only did we not talk about keto, and I thought that was the whole purpose of the meeting, but it got really weird and I had to use the kids to get out of it. But you find a person. So I'm trying to teach my kids with this. They go, they love to go anywhere and pass out like uh, business cards. And I have them come back and report. And they're like, she <laughs> walked me up the other day and she's like, I gave her a card and she's like, and she makes this face and it's like, it's cool. Not everyone works out, but you're, you're finding your aces, like Brian said, right? So I think you have to think about it when you're thinking big picture. How would you interact if you knew you'd be friends with this person 10 years from now? Like you would be so excited because you'd be like, looking back, you'd be like, this person's my person. Like they're in my tribe. They're going to be who I am. I'm ready to take them there. You would interact differently. You'd show up differently. Um, Nick and I were reading a parenting book. We got it when we took our kids to Sunday school at this church the first time. Um, and it talks about being intentional about who you bring in and how you bring them in to your kids' lives. And I think you can do the same thing when you're talking about it here. Filter. Remember, just because you walk up and talk to them, you know, Nick has great stories about he met so-and-so at a gas station or this or that, the other, but it's because he's intentional about who he brings in, how he brings them in, and he's always filtering, right? Oh, what book? Oh, gracious. Amy, I will get that book out. I forget what it's called. I think it's Parenting Beyond Your Capacity, maybe, is what it's called. Um, but I think if you think about the long term and like being excited and bringing this person into your group of friends, right? Like that's what, how we want to treat people. So my call to action today is to sit down and start an environment calendar for April. The same way you would schedule posts on social media, schedule it for your month in real life to get, alleviate yourself some of that stress. And then get your people that are local to you on board, whether that's one person, five people, 20 people, get them on board with the main ones, and then they can fill in their keto life parties and all of that stuff. And my second one is who actually went out and cold contacted yesterday? Like, let's get a hand up. Oh, you guys. Oh, I see some hands. Okay. I want you to take that person you talked to yesterday. And if you don't have someone that you talked to yesterday, I'll give you a break today, but you got to go do it today. Take someone new you messaged in the past week and take the next logical step, like connect them to a person, make plans to see them again, connect them somehow. And it's on my schedule day. <laughs> I love it. You scheduled in cold contacting. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> if you haven't scheduled in the beginning, go for it. But I think I'm excited to see how this turns out for you guys. If you are terrified to do it, reach out to Nick and I beforehand and be like, we're gonna five, four, three, two, one. We do it to each other, we can do it to you guys and then report back like that was a mess. And we're like, it's okay, do it again, go do it again. So if you need that, message me, I will give you my number and you can call us. So with that, I'm gonna throw it back to you, Alexis and have a good day. Awesome, oh, I just love you, Kelly, you're awesome. I'm like, oh, I wish that we were local to her because I would hang out with her all the time. <laughs> um, awesome. How's everybody feeling? Did you get some value today? That was fantastic. I absolutely love how Kelly said customers don't need more info. They need more insight. Like, oh, that just like freaking gold, like hit me so hard. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, awesome. So since we went a little bit over, I will wrap it up really quickly here. Um, but just again, to reiterate that call to action start out um, by planning your environment calendar for April. I had a lot of, I saw a lot of people were asking for the, the eight environments. I was trying to find it in my phone and I couldn't find it. So um, we will figure that out, either get it pulsed out or get it to the leaders and have them distribute it out to you guys. Um, there's a really awesome like image and PDF that goes along with it. So just stay tuned for that. We'll make sure to get that information out to you guys. Um, but if everybody's ready to rock and roll and hit the ground running, we got to get keto up into people's hands, eh? Yeah. Awesome. All right. You guys have a wonderful day and we will see you tomorrow. Bye everybody.